Good morning gardening friends. Welcome to my Tea Time Tuesday tour. Thanks for coming back. I would like to show you my veggie garden first today. I uncovered my uh, hoop house with the roll cover on it and I want to cover it back up quick when I'm done. So that white butterfly with the green worms doesn't eat my brassicas. Okay, on this arch, morning glory and scarlet runner bean. And I have bunnies, so for you who are new, I use a lot of chicken wire. And the beans and the morning glory should go up and over this arch which is a recycled gazebo, our old gazebo that was on the deck. My asparagus patch, which has reseeds of calendula and Japanese red mustard and amaranth and dill. Isn't that nice? No planting it. And comfrey. Now that comfrey there is unwanted, so I dig it for its root and its leaves. And it'll grow back again. You'll never get all the root. I use cement block, basement block, for my uh, two of my raised beds. This is my raspberries. I had a lot of uh, old canes in here, so I'm not going to have raspberry, too many raspberries early. These are ever bearing. This amaranth I'll leave there. I use it to uh, eat the leaves. And I'll just tie it to the chicken wire so it doesn't flop over. I'll be digging out some raspberry suckers. This is my garlic, which is starting to get its scapes. Last year was the first year I ever ate garlic scapes, and boy, were they good. So now I look forward to them. That garlic is German hardneck, great for zone five. I have peas, sugar snap peas, planted behind. Uh, germination wasn't real good here, but I have some more over down a little farther. I leave borage come up sporadically, but not a lot. I love the blue flowers. It attracts a lot of bees and is a great companion plant. Onions are, oh, uh, these are red wing. Don't get a lot of sun, probably about seven hours. So I don't have too good of onion growth, but good enough to give me some uh, harvest for oh, probably until October and then a, a couple, probably about 10 pounds for uh, storing. This garlic is music. This is getting its scapes too. This one stores good. In fact, I think I have one bulb left from last year. Cucumbers, these are market more over here. More barrage, Reuben basil. It stays a little nicer purple here where it doesn't get full sun. Over where it gets full sun, where it gets full sun, it is on not as purple, fades out. I think opal basil does a lot better if you want purple. That structure will hold my cucumbers, but I plan on putting uh, a branch, probably about a diameter of four inch branch, three inch branch across. Those are my neighbor's dead pines. Across uh, this area here to the frame of the greenhouse and then tie it on, and then the cucumbers can hang. I'm hoping that they hang from that structure to the green, the greenhouse frame. Peas. I should have peas in about, oh, I'd say about 10 days. My first uh, cilantro and parsley were back here. Some more, uh, no, these are uh, bunching onions. And cilantro. I let it come up wherever it wants with a cilantro. Japanese red mustard. 
nasturtiums. Love the orange flower and the leaves. This is emperor's, I think emperor something, emperor red nasturtium. And I like the really red orange flowers in the salad and the leaves are spicier. In here, my hoop house. Well, actually, it's a hoop house that has a row cover on it so that white butterfly doesn't get in here. I have broccoli and let's see, four brocks, big broccolis and then a Swiss chard and some kale and then another Swiss chard younger and then some younger kale on the other end. The Japanese red mustard that's back there having this cover on doesn't get as an intense sun plus the broccoli shading it so it doesn't get as red so not as spicy I guess. So that's okay too. Not all my family likes spicy. This is my uh, Tulsi holy basil and I grow quite a bit of it. I drink holy basil tea every day and I put some calendula in there too. Great health benefits. Can I name them all right now? No, but I know it's something I want so you can google holy basil. It, it is a uh, adaptogen herb so like uh, ashwagandha uh, but this I can grow, and ashwagandha I don't think I can grow. So I grow what I can use and what is good for me. These onions here, these others were red. This one is Alyssa Craig. Calendula planted on the edge of the garden. Mostly reseeds, but he threw new bark down here, so they're going to be coming up a little later. I have kohlrabi in there. And some beets, bull's blood beets in this area, and some more um, broccoli. Cilantro, radishes, and for you uh, who are new to my channel, I do use the method, a lasagna method of gardening with layers of mulch. And I probably start in about September mulching with leaves and grass clippings and that way it feeds my soil and I don't uh, use any for sure chemical fertilizers and this year I'm not even using any organic fertilizers I'm just using the worms that are in there and there's quite a few worms this year this is probably about the seventh year I'm using the lasagna method or, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to close this greenhouse up while I talk to you because I don't want those nasty little white butterflies in here. Just a minute. I don't know what you're looking at right now, but I want to get this. I'm going to put you down for a minute here, okay? You saw I had a hole in my greenhouse. I think a raccoon was on the edge one night, so I covered it up with duct tape, and so far it's working. So I'll make this more airtight later. I hope I'm not boring you with that. Then in these cement blocks, I have some chives. And then over here, some Fortex green beans with another planting down below in the bog garden. Basils over here, tomatoes, and uh, peppers. Those tomatoes in the back, the four of them were planted on February 5th, I think I had said. And I used the green um, mini tote greenhouse and in and out every day when the temperatures were above, oh, I'd say 25 or so, and used it as a little greenhouse to start my tomatoes. So I have sage, and I see I'm going to have to get out here with soapy water. What is this? I know it's not good. You see the black dots in that? Well, one thing for sure, I found a cucumber beetle already, and I usually get that black yucky dots on my leaves and looks like a fungus. So I'll have to get out here every day with soapy water. Spearmint. 
different types of peppers, bells, Italian roasters, carmens, jalapeno. Um, jalapeno is about the hottest we have. And uh, those little tiny uh, red and yellow peppers that you get like at Aldi. I saved seed one year and now I have it. I can plant it. And then Greek oregano, more basil, peppermint. I keep it far away from the spearmint so it doesn't run away from each other. So it does run away from each other. I don't want it. Um, the runners getting intermingled with each other. So this tomato here needs picking. It's going to be the first time we have bacon, lettuce, and tomato. This has been ripe for a few days, so I'd say, let's say June 10th, I had ripe tomatoes. And my cherry tomato, which is a larger cherry, is has got one in there too, and that's Juliet. But look how this one is catching up. You see how big it is compared to over there? So I don't know if I'm going to do it again, starting them early. This did get fungus, and I'm going to be removing, as soon as I pick those tomatoes, I will also take off those fungus leaves. And if I see the new ones getting it, then I'm taking the plant out right away. I certainly don't need that in June or July. More comfrey, and when I'm done uh, taping this, I will be chopping my comfrey down and using it for mulch in the veggie garden. Two extra tomatoes I planted right in the flower garden. Carrots. Now, last year I had flowers in here also with the uh, intermingled with the peppers. No, what was in here last year? I can't remember. But I had verbena at Buenos Aires. And can you see how it's coming up in between the carrots? This needs pulling time-consuming. And the only reason that Verbena Buenos Aires came up here and not over there is I did not disturb the mulch over there. So the seeds from the Verbena Buenos Aires did not get light to germinate. Where here, I uh, pushed the mulch away so I could plant my carrot seed and keep it watered. So Consequently, the Verbena Buenos Aires said, Whoa, this lady likes us. She's giving us water. She's giving us light. Let's grow for her. So I will keep some in, but that's going to be a tedious job of getting the uh, annual out of there. Dame's Rocket. Go crazy. Some people say invasive. Perennial in Wisconsin. Annabelle's doing pretty good. They're going to be hiding that yucky wood pile. Okay, I better concentrate on what's blooming this week, right? Oh, I see the spit bug is back. You see him? The spit bug? Let's see if we can see him. Oh, I don't know if I got him. Yes, water will knock them off. Yellow flower is celandine poppy, ending its bloom time, but gave me good early spring color. The yellow that will be taking over now is sundrops, primrose, and the, uh, what do I call that? I call it a buttercup, and it's in the ranunculus family. That's going to be cut back soon, too. Now, all my peonies this year and alliums have smaller flowers on. Can some of you tell me why? The ground is certainly better. I'm using the chop and drop method. Both are smaller. Look at this. These are all reseeds. Aren't they pretty? But they're going to look uh, all yucky at the same time too because you can see the, the foliage 
is dying back and that foliage also is the foliage from the early spring scillas, the blue, cobalt blue scillas. So it looks pretty but it'll look yucky for a while too. Oh, I'm in the shade and it's gorgeous here. That's the yellow that's going to be starting now. Can you see I'm in the shade of this maple tree? That little wren is singing, so pretty. Lots of milkweed coming up. I'm gonna, uh, it's starting to form flowers. I pull a lot out too, but you know you don't get that whole root, so. I always have milkweed for the monarch. Whoa, I can't forget you. How can I forget you? I almost walked by you. This is the uh, hydrangea, climbing hydrangea. It's going up and over this arch here and the sweet autumn clematis is slow to come and then the aggressive trumpet vine is on that side I, I don't know I have to take a peek I don't know if my sweet autumn's coming on here I had dieback on that on the big arch in the uh, by the uh, entrance of the garden Another peony. Now this was a tree peony and some of the tree peony foliage is still here. Okay, you see this one? I don't see any blooms on it. But it's reverting because it was grafted. I do believe you call it grafted from this and another peony. And I don't want to dink around with keeping off the um, new growth from coming in, so we'll just leave the strong, we'll survive. Joe pie, usually I use soapy hot pepper spray on it. Haven't gotten to it. I hope it corrects itself. Lots of dragonflies this year. Look at those pretty ones. Lupine. Original Annabelle, bridal wreath in part shade, so it doesn't like, it would be really pretty. Some of you have really pretty bridal wreaths in full sun. Baptisia. Lots and lots of phlox. If I have time, it'll be coming out, some of it. The flax that is star- oh, valerian's blooming here. I welcome valerian. It's a nice herb. Root stinks, big time. You use it for sleep or a sedative, but um, the flower smells good. Carolina flax. It's an early flax only about 18 inches to 2 feet Carolina flax blooms for about I'd say 2 weeks oh yeah last year you heard me talking about flea bane we like flea bane chives whoa we will be picking these we don't want them to reseed and they'll come back again usually don't bloom Sometimes you get a little bloom here and there. Nice sedum, I think it's called gold dust. Variegated. My alliums are probably about 20 years old, so they could be smaller also because they need uh, dividing. So I should mark where those alliums are and dig up the bulb. Poppies were pretty last week, week before, but oh, they are now starting to decline. 
So the orange in the garden is hawkweed. Isn't it pretty? Not Indian paintbrush. This is hawkweed. Oh, balloon flower found its way up here. The hawkweed with this primrose uh, buds is pretty. This is a horrible weed. My mom usually sits on the side of the garden. Um, half hazard, you can tell me what that weed is. I'm sure you can. It's got an arrow type leaf to it. But it creeps and it's hard to get. It's hard to get the whole root. So nice when the flowers are pretty and the buds. Oh, I missed the sage down there too. Last week I think I forgot the name of this. This is called meadow sage or May night. Deadhead it and it'll bloom for a very long time. Oh, I see the deer were up here. Can you see the munchies right there where they cut it off? But that's okay. They're the ones that taught me the bloom. Uh, it will bloom shorter. It will still bloom, but bloom shorter. Crane's bill. And then I like this combination of the sedum on the right, the, kind of the burgundy stem, bluish green foliage, and then the burgundy in the veining of the uh, Corabels. <laughs> he has a nest up there. Or nest in the house. He's sitting up on the copper tubing. Now I used to have to twig or prop all these daisies. But now I let the foliage of the other plants hold it up. That's when I was into managing the garden and a place for everything and everything in its place. That's not happening. I had a Diablo 9 bark down there. I, I accidentally cut down to the ground with a, a blade in fall and it's coming back nicely. Foliage looks good too. Chickweed. I picked chickweed this morning and this is my area over here of chickweed. Chickweed and perilla. Both edible. Chickweed and what else did I pick? Oh, lamb's quarters this morning for my bone broth. Annabelle's, more Annabelle's. Shall we look at the containers, how they're coming along? Sweet Alyssum. started from seed, a reseed. I had it in here last year. And these are tall cosmos, but I cut them back. So hopefully these in front here will only get about two foot, maybe a foot and a half. And then these back here, I transplanted back farther so they get taller and probably about two and a half, three feet. So the theme in there is orange burgundy of the canna and the blue of the container. Then up here, coming good, lantana. My new annual that I will spend money on because it's drought tolerant. Along with the sweet potato vine and then a Swedish ivy. grasses are starting to plume up. Now these here, I bought one container and split it in half, so uh, it's set back a little, but it'll fill in. 
So I just repeat the burgundy, the orange, and then the blue container. This container is very shallow and it was dry and I lost one of the, uh, oh, what is that called? Lobelia, annual lobelia that was on this side. So I stuck in some of this ivy because this grows like a weed. And then there's coleus in there, two different kinds, lime green, hoping to break up this shade area. Carolina Flux, Spiderwort, Poppies, oh, Stella Tora is starting. It's the only patch I have. It's just such a, a for sure daylily. Grasses going to seed, throw them on the grass. Ladies mantle, turtle head for fall color, flax for summer color, some in substance hasta for color all the time. Oh, I see that the persicaria jumped the path here. It's behind me. That's the persicaria. Isn't the foliage pretty? is edible to sorrel, wood sorrel. Whoop, I didn't trim those. The deer were here. They trimmed all my variegated Solomon seal also. Okay, I think it's coming to an end, friends. Shade garden. Astilbees are starting to get their little flower on it. So pretty. That red. Then the burgundy and the persicaria leaf. Oh, the circle flower. I don't have much of it in the garden anymore. This aggressive plant, I don't know why it doesn't want to be aggressive by me. That's the circle flower. It's in the loosestrife family. Pretty. Pretty, pretty. Next week I'll have to start someplace else so I can get down to the wild area. Or maybe one day I'll just do like a Wednesday walk on the wild side and walk the woods with you see what's going on down there. Whoa, those are some big leaves on the oak tree. See that little oak tree? My granddaughter started that for my acorn. But my goodness, that is one big leaf. So take care of my gardening friends. Always happy to hear from you. But I understand if I don't hear a comment from you, it's okay because I do this every week. But just stop by once in a while and say hi and what you're doing. Better yet, come to my website, I'd like that. That way we can chat in a little more detail. You can help me, maybe I can help you, or we'll both inspire each other. Thanks guys, and take care. Huge hugs to you. If I ever get to meet you in person. Oh, the deer are down here too. Nice. They're trimming off the edge of the path here so it doesn't get so tall. Aren't they helpful? Take care. Bye-bye.